Hello, it's Steve Fentress on behalf of the Strassenburg Planetarium at the Rochester Museum and Science Center with a look at things we can see in our sky, weather permitting, the last week of April 2020. We start with the view through a well-focused, modest telescope or even really good binoculars looking at that extremely bright evening star that's been in our western sky after sunset for weeks now, the planet Venus. And as the planet comes closer to us and gets more and more between us and the sun, a crescent phase is visible through a modest-sized telescope. And there's a bonus on Sunday evening, April 26th, 2020, waxing crescent moon appearing near Venus in the evening sky. And as the moon sets, the old moon in the new moon's arms, earth shine, light reflected from earth onto the unlit side of the moon, so it's faintly visible inside the crescent. Well, we like to say you want a perfectly clear sky for stargazing, but there's something to be said for broken clouds. They kind of add a three-dimensional quality. And as the clouds move and as the evening goes on, you watch bright things like Venus or the moon or some of the bright stars go in and out between clouds. It can be a beautiful thing to see. We're at the time of year where sunset is after 8 o'clock and the sun is setting on April 26th, 20 degrees north of west. And just as it gets dark, look west-southwest to say goodbye after a long season to the brilliant constellation Orion, featuring that star Betelgeuse in one shoulder. See that three, that row of three stars in the center, Orion's belt. Follow that line to the left to Sirius, the brightest star in the entire night sky. Betelgeuse was uh, an object of attention over the winter because it went through an unusual dimming phase from about December through February, where it got noticeably dimmer than it is right now, but it has recovered to normal brightness. It's always been an irregular star. If you have binoculars, look into the region below Orion's belt for that column of three stars, and there's still time before Orion sets to see that faint fuzzy light there. That's the great Orion Nebula, a cloud of gas and dust where new stars are forming. Let's see what else is coming into view just after the sun sets. Looking over toward the east, two really bright stars of contrasting colors. The one on the upper left definitely orange, the one on the lower right bluish-white, Arcturus and Spica. And if you've been to the planetarium, maybe you remember this famous trick. Notice in the upper left there a familiar star shape, the Big Dipper. There's the cup and the curved handle. Follow that curve of the handle outward. Follow the arc to Arcturus. The orange color of Arcturus indicates that that is a sun that is not as hot as our sun. With stars, orange or red indicates cooler than our sun. Blue, like Spica, indicates hotter than our sun. And those stars are going to become more and more prominent as we go farther and farther into the spring. Turning around to the northeast, there's Vega, summertime's brightest star, rising just as the sun sets. Get to know that one. We're going to be seeing a lot more of it. And here's a fun little project. Look north as it's getting dark and watch for two bright stars to come to the same height above the horizon. There's Vega over there in the northeast on the lower right of your screen. And coming into the upper left in just a moment, Capella. And as we let time go on to later and later in the evening, by the end of April, we'll see there's Capella and there's Vega over there. At what time do they come level with each other in the northern sky? That will vary with the time of year, but at the end of April, it should be about 11 o'clock.
there we are. Just above the N for North, you can see that group of five stars shaped like a W, the constellation Cassiopeia. And now look high overhead, and there's the Big Dipper again. And the famous thing you do with the Big Dipper is take the cup and take the last two stars in the cup, and those two stars will always point to Polaris, our North Star, the one star in the sky that stays in the same place no matter what time of night or what time of year we look. Because, just by accident, at our time in history, Earth's North Pole happens to point almost exactly at that star. It's a little later now. Let's look west, and we can see four bright stars making a kind of a giant archway over the west-northwestern horizon. Starting on our left, it's the bright star Procyon. Then in the middle, two stars that look almost the same, the Gemini twins, Pollux and Castor. And then over to the northwest, Capella, which we saw before. It's a little after midnight now. Venus has finally set. And if we adjust our chairs to look high overhead, spring constellations, there's Leo the lion. See how that backward question mark of stars makes the back of the lion's head and the triangle points to the lion's tail. And notice Leo is always right under the Big Dipper, which is part of the Great Bear, Ursa Major. And now looking high overhead, we can do that again. Take the Big Dipper, See the curve of the handle, follow the arc to Arcturus. And then after that, sail on to, let's get our menus out of the way here, Spica. From the handle of the Big Dipper, follow the arc to Arcturus and sail on to Spica. Two contrasting stars of the spring sky. Let's adjust our chairs and turn over toward the east once again. And after midnight, a prominent, easy to find summer star pattern is coming up. It's huge. It's shaped like a giant slice of pizza pointing south. Mmm, pizza. It's the summer triangle, those three bright stars. The bright one on top is Vega, then down to the left, Deneb, and the one coming up last on the lower right, Altair. If you have binoculars, adjust your lawn chair and get them focused and relaxed and rest your elbows on your chest or something and scan through the middle of the summer triangle. You're looking into one of the richest parts of the Milky Way and as you go through there, you might notice this little group. This is famous among stargazers, the coat hanger. Just an accidental arrangement of stars, but once you see it, you can't unsee it. So we are scanning with binoculars in the middle of the summer triangle through all those Milky Way stars, and this weird little shape will jump out at you. There's the Summer Triangle once again, and it is above the horizon shortly after midnight at this time of year, facing east, and it's huge when you see it outside. Now, turning to the northeast, I would like to introduce one of my favorite stars in the night sky. And to find it, we have to find an obscure constellation. It's from ancient Greek mythology, Cepheus the King. There he is in the middle. You see him tipped over. He's got a beard and a sash and this is the stars are not bright so it's a tricky one to find but it is shaped like a house with a pointed roof and the star i'm talking about is in the basement 
right in the center of the basement. It's called Muse Cephei, or Herschel's Garnet Star. And it has the distinction of being the reddest star visible to the unaided eye, at least according to some lists. Not so impressive with the unaided eye, but with binoculars scanned through there, and you'll, the, the other Milky Way stars are scattered across the sky, as they say, like diamond dust on black velvet. And then in the middle of this, Mu Cephei, Herschel's garnet star, looks like a charcoal briquette. So it's worth the effort to try to find this obscure constellation Cepheus and then look in the middle of the basement of the house for this very red star. Well, let's look southeast and go into the wee hours of the morning now and see what rises. Very bright reddish star Antares. And above and to the right of it, you see those three stars making part of Scorpius the Scorpion. At least that's one artist's interpretation. So that will be noticeable shortly after midnight and then coming up close to three o'clock in the morning really bright in the southeast almost as bright as venus the planet jupiter followed shortly by saturn and then mars about 3.30 in the morning now. And let's adjust our lawn chair and get out our binoculars. And you see in the center there a pattern of stars shaped like a teapot. This is, according to ancient mythology, the constellation Sagittarius, at least according to some mythology. But sky gazers like to look for something simpler. There's the handle of the teapot and the lid and the spout sticking out there on the right. Well, this is another great place to look with binoculars around the spout. Binoculars give you just enough magnification to see beautiful star clusters and nebulas. We are looking toward the direction of the center of our Milky Way galaxy when we look toward the teapot, so there's a lot to see. So that's facing southeast after 3 o'clock in the morning in late April. And it's the teapot. Now, if we have a modest telescope, we can try it out on the planets. And I recommend starting with Jupiter. Even good binoculars, carefully focused, will reveal what Galileo first saw in the early 1600s, little stars arranged in a straight line on either side of Jupiter. And every time you look, the arrangement is different because those are the large moons of Jupiter. And every time they're constantly moving, so every time you look, they're going to be in a different arrangement. So Jupiter's moons, easy to see with good binoculars or a modest telescope. And carefully aiming over, Saturn takes better equipment and more skill to see but it's worth it. Seeing the rings of Saturn in person through a telescope is an experience everyone should have, but you need a magnification of at least 50 and you need a telescope with a very steady mount to see the rings. And you'll see moons accompanying Saturn as well. And here we are looking southeast. And we will wait for sunrise. There's Mars coming up. 
Mars will get much brighter through the summer and into the fall. Earth and Mars come near each other about every 26 months, and that is happening in October 2020. And at that time, Mars will look really like a really bright star. Right now, it's only moderately bright. Let's not forget, in the morning, to check over in the west where things are setting. Early in the morning, there's the Big Dipper. Follow the arc to Arcturus again. And to see that orange star Arcturus lighting up the sky as daylight comes and the other stars fade away, that will be a spectacular thing to see. Well, we've shifted back to facing east. And let's settle in. We're at the time of year now where sunrise on April 27th is at 6.08 a.m. The sun is rising 20 degrees north of east. Spring is definitely in progress. And that's the sky this week. Thanks for watching.